What's happening, everybody? Welcome back to working with Bobby. We got a quick little easy, hopefully, video um, in store for y'all today. We're going to be doing front rotors and front brake pads on a, actually, I don't remember the year model, but it's a uh, Nissan Armada. Um, one of my own, one of my aunt and uncle vehicles. They always supporting me, supporting what I do. So, for the people that don't know, I'm going to try to go ahead and, uh, and do front brake pads, front brake rotors on this Nissan Armada. Let me get the camera turned around so you can see what body style it is. That way, if anybody out there got one like that, me being a Nissan technician, it's supposed to be easy for me. But we'll wait and see how that goes. All right, this is what it looked like. I think they made this body style from maybe 07 to possibly... Don't don't hold it to me now because I, I'm, I done written on so many of them, I don't remember some of the gins and the body styles and the year models and whatnot. But I think they made this particular body style up until like 2000 and maybe 15 or 16, somewhere along the way. And then they um, changed the body style again. But we got uh, ceramic front brake pads. And we got uh, two front brake rotors. And what I'm gonna do is try to, you know, be as detailed as I possibly can. I already got the jack stands up on it, holding up. You know, I always try to be safe out here, even though I'm working with dirt. I put that board down, put the jack stands up on it because, you know, I'm strong, but not strong enough to pick up a vehicle. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the wheels off. And what I'm gonna do is just show y'all one side. And then of course it's rinse and repeat for the other side. And then we are um, talk about the, the, the conclusion at the end of the video. So I'm gonna get y'all up in the tripod, get these wheels off, and then we are gonna get to work. All right, y'all. I'm sorry about that time lapse. I didn't know that the um, camera was going to do that when I moved the tripod for you to see me taking the other tie off. But what I'm getting ready to do is pull off the caliper. I got my light set up, so hopefully y'all can see pretty good. I'm going to pull off the caliper. Um, these bolts are 17 millimeter bolts. I, I have power tools, but, you know, some people don't have access to them, so... As long as you have a 17 like gear wrench or, uh, uh, you know, if you got a power tool, you can use an impact or whatever. I'm lazy now. Since I got access to them, I try to use them. I mean, they do. They are more efficient, but everybody can't afford them. So you can get them done without it. It's just, it's just way easier to do it with a power tool. But take the cap off. Be careful, hold on to these. A lot of people don't put them back, but hold on to these. What these do is keep, they push away from the rotor so so uh, it don't wear the brakes down so quick, so so fast. I mean, yeah, they're gonna still wear down, but these keep them from putting unnecessary heat in the rotor when, you know, when it's not necessary. And as you can see, it was pretty much about time for my aunt to go ahead and get these replaced. Next thing I'm going to take off, and it's a short line on here. It should be fine. I like to tuck them behind the, the wheel bearing sometimes, but they I don't normally have the, the caliper all so long to it. It's hanging for a long period of time. At my job, I have those uh, little S hooks, and I just hang the caliper up like that. But now I'm going to take it off the uh, third member, and this hardware, if it's new ones in the kit, I'm going to go ahead and replace those as well. But these bolts for the third member are 18, 18 millimeter. Now you see how we're, I'm struggling to get this big gun in there to the top one. What I'm going to do is get a gear wrench. I mean, I can't get around there, but I'm just really being lazy. But I can, you can get to it with a gear wrench also. I'll just say it like that. Want to, they want it to be a little bit of a pain. Some people take this bracket off, you know, so they don't have to do what I just did. But, uh, 
Right, I caught that with the back of my hand. Now your third member is off. Next thing you want to do, sometimes it'll come off and sometimes it won't. You got your rotor off. Now, by the looks of it, this is probably the OEM rotor. My aunt don't have this that much miles on the truck, but um, they replacing them. Some people can turn them. Um, this one probably could have been turned, but they're gonna go ahead and replace them. So that's what we're gonna do. <sighs> So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put you guys on pause and then move the trap the camera stand so I can show y'all how to properly wash off the rotor. All right, we back. What you need when you get ready to wash off the rotor, you can use one of the two things. I think I feel like it's best to just use breaking parts cleaner, but some people don't have access to that. So let's say that you're in the middle of nowhere or whatever. And you just don't have access or you don't have the money to buy no no brake parts cleaner then you can clean them with soapy with soapy water you know just rinse them off because you get ready to put them back on so it ain't like they're gonna flash rush but i like to wash down one side of the surface and wash down the other sometimes i hit it with the rag sometimes i don't but it all depends you know because that brake clean stuff it dries up pretty good all by itself so that's pretty much what you do when you're washing off the rotor. All right, now we're back over to the vehicle. Got our clean rotor. We'll set it on the studs. Another thing people forget, check these. Check these slide pins. What I like to do, because these here, they'll get stuck. And people are, are swapping down that the, that the piston that went bad in the, um, in the caliper. And that don't, that, that don't be the case. What it be is the, the, the grease, the lubrication, will go away on these slide pins. And it'll cause the, um, when you, you, you can press the brake, but it won't slide back properly. So I'm going to go in the shop and get some wheel band grease and lubricate those and put them back. Some people use anti-seize. You can. Um, I don't do it too much unless I'm just too lazy to go walk and get the, the wheel band grease. But I like to take it and just, you know, just slide it on there. That way these will get to work like they're supposed to. And since these are the same, it don't make no difference what part, you know, if you don't put them back in the same spot. I know some of them on some vehicles have a, the one side have like a rubber seal at the top. And the other side have like a, um, you know, just a straight metal pin. But you're taking, lubricate them. If you ever get one of them and it's not moving freely, look at it, address it. And you can get a tub of wheel, wheel band grease from, you know, pretty much any part store. So let me find me a rag. Now, once you made sure your slide pins move freely, and you got your rotor on, sometimes you have to put a lug nut on it or whatever to hold it in place, you know, so you can start the bolts like you should. But if you just be patient and take your time, Everything will fall right back into place just like how you took it apart. So try not to be in a rush. Now, in my profession, time is money. So doing this kind of stuff should be easy if you got enough years in the business like I do. And unless you run into some problems, you shouldn't um, you shouldn't uh, take a long time, you know, doing a simple rotor and, and pad, pad slap. Now, just because I don't feel like fighting get that caliper that's behind, this top third member bolt, I'm gonna hit it with a gear wrench. <laughs> I know whoever invented these, they living real good right now. But I'm not because I got the wrong size.
All right, let me write. Go ahead and snug them up. You don't have to tighten them to the point where you can't get it back off. Just snug them up. There are torque specs for this stuff. Um, at this particular time, I don't know them, nor do I practice doing it. Not saying that you uh not supposed to. Just saying that, that I've been doing this long enough to know how tight something should or shouldn't be. Now, when you're replacing your pads, nope, let me back up. Let me put this hardware on there. Another thing about hardware, every piece of hardware does not require you to put that orange brake pad stop squeal stuff on it. Some people believe in it, some people don't. I don't really mess with it like that because if it wasn't like that from the factory, then I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I done did break jobs before, you know, well, countless break jobs over, over my career, but I done did them before and people then had all that stuff just kicked up all over the place. And I'm like, okay, you wondering why you got an issue with your brakes. You got a whole bunch of stuff on there that don't supposed to be on there. And these little shims, they decided to pop right back in place where the other ones came off. And all you got to do is just make sure that it's not making contact with the rotor. And you can do that by spinning it. You don't hear nothing, which is good. Now... What we're going to do is we're going to get the pad matched up so you can put the right pad on the right side. So this one goes over here on the piston side or inboard side and either one of these other ones going to go on the outboard side. If you want to know what kind of pads these are or if you want to look into them, if you have a I think they would fit Titans and all models. Uh, let me see if I can find a part number on the box. Part number is 103-1286. And the ones for the rotors, the box way over there, but I, I ain't going over here to get it. So you have to look it up. I'm going to go ahead and get this done. But uh, you just slide them back in the groove, same way the other ones came off. And then do the same here on the outboard pad. Inboard, outboard. All right. Now, before I put these clips on, I'm going to go ahead and work on squeezing the uh, dual pistons. Matter of fact, let me move that because I know they're going to fall. I just, I put, I remember to put it back when it's time. But squeezing the dual pistons back inside the, the caliper itself. So, we, we come to this special tool. This is made by Power Built. There is no part number on the tool, but these magnetic clips or shims, they come off. You know, for, I hope y'all can see it. I, I'm, I'm looking at the back side of my phone. But um, it's a ratcheting uh, uh, tool for pushing the piston back in. If you don't have one, I believe it's a good investment. Now, you can do this with, like, C-clamps and, and all that sort of thing, but I, I'm... Like I told you, I'm lazy, and I'm going the wrong way. But I'm lazy, and, and in my profession, I gotta make it as fast as possible. So you just kinda just gradually push both pistons in. You don't have to crank on it. You don't have to overdo it. I got this from Amazon. I don't remember how much it was, but if you look up, you know, piston brake caliper tool, I'm sure that um, a whole bunch of different brands and makes or whatever gonna come up. I like this one because you know it, it is pretty quick. It's quicker than a ten lock pliers and an old brake pad. But before I got this, that's exactly what I used to use. That and a, a C clamp. Now once you finish, you can come back, reverse the, the deal, slide it back out. And what I like to do is take it in and spin it in, you know, so for when I get ready to do my next one. Now now y'all gonna see why I did, why I took that pad off at the time and why I didn't put no clips on. Cause if I, if I would have, then I'd have to fight holding the brake pads in place until I slapped the, the caliper back on top of it. 
these holes that go right back in the hole. You hold them there. And then the one at the bottom. I done seen a whole bunch of people that done got somebody in the backyard to put brake pads on. And they don't never put these back on. If they come off, please put them back. So to keep from fighting with them, all you got to do is hold the pad in place. Just like how I'm doing. And I got large hands, so it's a little bit easier for me to do at times. But you hold that joint on there. And once you slide the caliper across it, it ain't going no way. Then you get your, your bolts that you took out in the beginning. And you take your time. Take your time and get them started. You don't have to rush because if you cross three, cross three of these, it's game over for you. And where, I, where my shop is down here, oh, I'm sorry, I'm blocking y'all. Where my shop is down here, I don't have that luxury. Because I'm miles from any, uh, any part store. I'm at least 30, 25, 30 minutes from any part store. So you best believe I be trying to make sure stuff is right by the time they get down here. I don't have time to be running back and forth. Now make sure you got them started good. Uh -oh. Also make sure that the slide pin don't move on you. Because if it does, the caliper will be crooked. side pretty much same way I did this side and then we're gonna sit down and we're gonna do our conclusion on the couch so just hold tight all right y'all all right we got it finished up uh go ahead and get to the conclusion I'm gonna show y'all what tools you need when you're trying to do this on your own so I'm gonna get the camera turned around all right this is all I use to do that brake job you need well you don't need but something to take the the wheel off it's a 21 millimeter socket if you got a four-way wrench uh air impact it don't matter just something to, to safely get the wheel off and on properly i use this flat blade screwdriver to um take the clips off of the third member 18 millimeter wrench gear wrench or um socket this is an 18 um socket as well that i use with the impact to get the third member bolts off I have two ratchets here because what I try to do is I try to break the bolts loose with the uh, with the uh, manual ratchet so I don't break the anvil inside this um, electric ratchet. But this is a 17 millimeter deep well socket that's on that um, that's on that um, ratchet here, and also my uh, tool. The, now these tools come in many shapes and sizes. Just something to push the piston back in. I'm gonna just set it there just for, you know just to be in the shot. But that's what you need pretty much to do a brake job properly. And don't forget, it's not in on the table, but the, the lubrication for the slide pins. You want to also make sure you have that. But um, I'm going to get ready to put this stuff up and get ready to shut down. So we're going to go over to the couch as usual so we can finish off our video like we normally do. All right. What did we learn? Um that's that was a nissan armada but it's pretty much the same principle when you're replacing the front brake pads and sometimes on the rear depending on the, how the caliper set up um uh, rotors and pads but what i think is the main point is that it's not as as difficult as a lot of people make it out to be you can do this stuff i'm not trying to like oh take i'm taking business from technicians and all that kind of stuff Trust and believe, if you knew how to do most things, you definitely wouldn't be paying nobody unless you just got the money to do so or you lazy. But if you want to try to save yourself some money and do some of this, you know, minor stuff on your own, it's really not all that bad. You just need, a, for one, a safe environment to do your work. You want to make sure you work smart and work safe. 
and make sure you got the proper tool to do the job because without the proper tool it can get much harder like i don't have a lift out here so i got to work down on my knees on a mat so it's much harder to do the same thing i would normally do at a dealership or in a shop with a concrete floor and a lift but i still get it done you know thank the law for that and then if i didn't have the the power tools i would either be doing it with an air ratchet an air gun or either a manual on um, tool but i it's still you still get the same work done that's what i'm trying to get at um also cleanliness is next to godliness so try to be as clean with your work as possible um you know if you waste brake fluid which a lot of time that happens when you push the pistons back in the caliper you want to wash all that brake fluid off with you know brake clean or you know whatever where is back there I'm in the country now, so you see them that dark area back there, them woods. So when I hear something, I'm looking. I don't play that. But anyway, um, another thing you want to pay attention to or, you know, try to do, um, pay attention to whatever, anything you take off, put it back. Tighten it back like it should because, you, you know, that's serious. You know, wheels come off, brakes come loose. You can kill somebody with that. So make sure you get somebody or yourself. So make sure you, you know, anything you loosen. Make sure you tighten the bag. But overall, it's not that bad. So I appreciate, you know, if you made it to this part of the video, I appreciate everybody watching. Hopefully I put, you know, something out there that help you guys learn and, and be able to be more independent with your own vehicles. Like I always tell y'all at the end of the videos, until I get to where I can produce that kind of content, I got a lot of stuff that I want to try to do, but I'm just waiting on it to come. So anything, not anything, most things that I can you know, put out there to help others and put some good con content out there for y'all to watch. Try to encourage you guys. That's what I'm going to do. So, like I always tell y'all, be blessed, be encouraged, and keep wrenching. I'll see y'all on the next video.